This doesn't go back to the, the origins of the 90s, it goes back to the 80s. The, the Count Dracula. It was only good in the film Cannonball Run when the two girls jumped out of <laughs> <laughs> Right. Sebastian, what's it like to get videotaped everywhere you go? I mean, it's horrible. <laughs> I'm Eddie Alterman with Dan Punn from Car and Driver, and we're here with Sebastian Vettel and Christian Horner from Infinity Red Bull. Just got off a dominant win at the Canadian Grand Prix, and we're here to ask them some questions. So thanks for being with us, guys. We really, really appreciate it. Um, how are you going to preserve the title gap this season, both on the driver's side and the constructor's side? Um, well. You can talk about the drivers, I'll talk about the constructors. Make me sure I finish ahead of the other drivers. <laughs> <laughs> It's that simple? That's how you um, do? Well, it's obviously not that simple, but um, yeah, uh, I think uh, it's a long season. Uh, at the moment, look, it looks pretty good, but there's uh, still a long way to go. Things can change quickly, we've seen it in the previous years. So um, yeah, right now, I think looking at the scoreboard is not, not that important. Uh, it's nice to hear that uh, you know, people remind us that we are on top, but um, yeah, it's still, still too, too far. Um, and too, too many races to go uh, to really talk about the title. Are there any races in particular you're concerned about, worried about? Um, not really. I think we have a competitive car, strong car. So, uh, yeah, it's you know the circumstances are different every every weekend, and uh, for sure we're pushing very hard to develop the car and make it faster. But uh, yeah, it's difficult to foresee what's what's going to happen at every single event. So. We've got to be on top of our game and see what we can do. Yeah, yeah I think Seb's sums up perfectly. I think it's a matter of getting the most out of every single event and uh, reliability is important, consistency, understanding these tyres <laughs> and, and finishing ahead of, ahead of our opponents. So, um, uh, you know, there's still, still quite a way to go in this championship and you can't afford to ride anybody out of it yet. So Christian, you have two very competitive drivers, and there's mm -hmm. the, I think the media has made a lot of this season about the rivalry between the two. How do you manage these two guys? Well, seven. I think you, you forgot the word up <laughs> when <Manager>. your question. <laughs> the media has made a lot of things. Oh, up. yeah? Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, no, well, basically we don't manage them. That's the <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but look, you know, they're both competitive guys. Um, they've been together for... How long have you been together now? Five years, F yeah, fifth year. Five, yeah. You know, the combination has won three constructors world championships. Sebastian has won three drivers world championships, and you know it's a combination that is you know is delivered for us. But uh, inevitably, there's been some you know some tense moments at times because they're both both competitive elements. Yeah. Uh, first off, congratulations on the win. It was a, a heck of a dominating performance, both from car and driver. Um, it, it seems like whenever you start on the front row, you have a, an uncanny ability to walk away from the field on that first lap. I think you were 2.7 seconds ahead of second place on that first lap, um, which is pretty shocking uh, to most viewers, I think. Uh, what, are you, what are you saying to yourself before those lights go out? I hope to react on time. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you know. First of all, you you really focus on the start. I, I try to you know uh, make sure I'm quick in terms of reaction uh, because it can make a difference. And then you 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 know um, obviously try to get your your stuff right in terms of clutch and uh, throttle management uh, to really make sure you get a good launch. Um, obviously, it was quite a release when you then uh, relief when you then look into the mirror and you see that you're safe. Uh, the sprint down to turn one in Montreal is also not that long, so um, yeah, I was able to save a little bit uh, of course uh, for the reminder of the lap, which helped in, in other places. But uh, I think Lewis was in the same same position um, as I was really only racing him into turn one, and then you know you really try to use uh, and push as hard as you can in the first lap where the tires are not yet uh, completely up to temperature, etc. Everything still a bit cold, but really try to use that to make sure you have a gap uh, which can save you you know later on especially when DRS uh, when we can use the, the rear wing we can open the rear wing to, to overtake so you you kind of break free and uh, you put a gap that's big enough between you and the next guy. 
Have you been in the simulator with the 14 car yet? Any challenges, uh, if you have, uh, any challenges associated with that? Are you going to have to change style um, at all? I haven't been in the simulator yet because obviously, uh, yeah, we are working very hard on the 14 car already, but mm -hmm. uh, still it's a, a lot of work to do on the challenges. I think it's uh, yeah, a lot of things that will uh, go with that will change. Uh, engine and car. Push. Sorry? More buttons to push on the wheel? Uh, not necessarily, actually. I think uh, probably um, less buttons to push, but more stuff to change, probably. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's it, from what I understand, what I saw uh, when I visited Renault at the, the power plant in, in uh, France, um, in terms of the new engine, it's incredible the amount of new technology. Um, yeah the amount of development that takes place also uh, in terms of what happens to the car but maybe Christian can expand on that so it's well it, it looks very interesting but it's a mm -hmm. massive change yeah yeah how do you get the team ready for that no it's a big challenge I mean the, the challenge we've got this year is combining this year's championship challenge you know with obviously a big regulation change for next year right. so it's spinning a lot of plates at the moment so because we're obviously pushing to continue to develop this car right to the end of the year but um, you know, we're just managing that that situation. It's um, uh, it's a big packaging exercise to integrate the new engine into the into next year's chassis yeah. and uh, chassis and regulations. Yeah. And um, so uh, so yeah, we're thinly stretched at the moment, but uh, uh, just about managing to keep on top of it. Would you guys, both as driver and constructor, like to see a more open formula? It seems like you know these rules are pretty contrived and they change year to year in really kind of contrived ways. It's good for spectators and it's good for racing, but how do you guys feel as both driver and constructor? Would you like to see maybe more creativity or do you feel like there's enough in the formula? I think the problem you've got is you've got some very clever people that are looking to circumnavigate the regulations yeah. continually. And so no matter how much they squeeze the rules, you know the engineers will always come up with a solution, and so it's a it's a tricky one. If there were no rules, obviously, you know that would be that would be too much. So it's finding that balance between not going too far, yeah. but still allowing the creativity for a team and constructor to make a a difference, and of course a driver to make a difference. What's been the the challenges, uh, the greatest challenges this year, thus far though? Has it been tires? Has it been? I would say. Yeah, um, I understand think uh, the tires. understanding the tires. I mean, um, and the last last event was very good. I think in Canada we were, yeah, average in terms of uh, controlling the tires, uh, which we haven't always been. So, um, yeah, uh, it's a step forward from where we were. But uh, why is that? It's not that easy to answer because every weekend the conditions change. We have different compounds. Uh, every track has a different roughness in terms of asphalt, so it's uh, it's not that simple. It's not just rock up, you know, uh, uh, and uh, and get into the car and drive out, and, uh, and and if you have a problem, change it. It's not it's not that easy. It's very complex. Uh, you know, sometimes some teams are very good on short runs in qualifying trim, and then in the race it's completely different. Uh, so yeah, it's we are working very hard on that. And I think we've done a, a good job since, let's say, you know, race one. But uh, surely there's more we can do. I know Pirelli came to you guys as well as Mercedes, and you said no. To your knowledge, did they go to everybody, or? No, well, I think they went to one or two teams. I can under look, Pirelli have got to test their tire. Right. So I don't think the issue that we have is with, it's certainly not with Pirelli. I think what happened is Pirelli came to a couple of teams and said, we want to run. Uh, you know our tire. We want to develop the tire. Can you run it on a contemporary car, i.e., a current car? And our view was you can't do that because yeah. the regulations are very clear. Mercedes had a different view. We believe that's not in line with the regulations, so you know, that's why we protested it. But uh, um, you know, it's down to the entry. And when you enter the championship at the beginning of the year, you agree to abide by the sporting and technical regs. Right. Um, it's not the responsibility of a, a third-party supplier. Speaking of regs and, and penalty points, next year they're talking about the penalty system. Um, how do you think that's going to affect racing? Um, I think it doesn't. Uh, at least it shouldn't. I think that's not the intention. Um, 
I think there's some things that, you know, most of the things, they are clear uh, anyways, because I think there is still something like a gentleman's agreement and mm -hmm. some things you just do out of respect. I mean, in the end of the day, we fight wheel to wheel, open wheel, uh, you know, at very, very high speeds. And uh, you need respect, you need to trust the other guy, because, you know, it's not like on the road where you, you don't know the other, other drivers. You all go in one direction and you know who you are racing. And uh, I think that's important. You have that trust uh, and knowledge about the guy that you, you race with uh, to you know, know that you can really go to the edge or leave a little bit of, of a gap. Um, and the points system for next year in terms of penalties shouldn't change, shouldn't change that. So uh, if anything, I mean, it's not entirely clear yet how it is going to be distributed, but if anything, it should improve it. Um, yeah, so we need to see really the final version before I think it makes sense to, to judge. Mm -hmm. Who is the uh, who's the hardest guy in the field to pass? I mean, other than your teammate. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it depends. Fans uh, of <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it it. Uh, I I think truly was a nightmare to be honest. Fortunately, he's not around anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somehow he managed to be wider than the yeah. track limits. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, the other guys, I think, um, yeah, racing Lewis or racing Fernando is tough, for example, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of respect. Um, same as racing Michael the last couple of years. You could really go, you know, not just close to his tire, you could like literally just one finger with uh, in between and you felt safe because you knew the other guy was in control. Um, but it was very difficult to to get pa it's generally very difficult to get past these guys because they know also how to defend. So, of course, yeah. yeah. Is is DRS contrived? How do you feel about it? Uh, what does contrived exactly mean? Is it WWF? Is it, is it more <laughs> show than? <laughs> than uh, um, I think um, it got better. Obviously, it was a new system, a new technology in the beginning, uh, and some races it was over the top, so it was too easy to pass. But I think uh, yeah, the FIA did a good. The FIA did a good job uh, controlling the distance of uh, the activation zone, so um, to really you know control the advantage, let's say. And uh, I think it's a good thing. It spices up the racing. It helps. And uh, I think generally, if you look at Formula One now, it's yeah a lot more entertaining. Uh, it's much better show, but it's still racing. Um, but much, much better, I think, to, to watch. Uh, the cars are also much closer together. I think if you look at the result in qualifying, okay, you can't take last week qualifying because it was wet. But generally in dry conditions, you have 15 cars in a second. I think if you go 10 years back, you had maybe two cars in one second. Yeah. So that's a, a big difference. Can we talk for a second about your role as a director of Infinity Performance? Um, how involved are you and what do you want to what do you want to see the cars, the road cars, turn into uh, in terms of? Well, I think um, obviously you've got the current cars, and uh, yeah, in terms of current cars that are at the end of their development, it's about you know, uh, we did the, for example, the the FX special version uh, last right. year, uh, which you know is is a generally in in road car I th uh, road cars I think is always a long process. So whereas you know in racing, if you want something to happen, you want it to happen tomorrow and not in a year so obviously in, in road cars it's different because there's you know uh, different uh, you have to not just please one guy or two drivers in a team you have to please you know <laughs> ideally everybody which is quite hard um, so we did that version and it took you know a long time to get to the result that we had which in the end is only a, a little bit of adjustments here and there but uh, in terms of production and what you want to do etc it's it's more than it's it's more complex um, for the future, I think uh, yeah, there is a drive to have, you know, a, a performance car. And as a director of performance, if you go with the title, uh, then it's obviously um, taking care of the, the performance. So really test driving the cars and uh, giving my input. I did give the input, for example, last year on a test uh, track for the Q50 in Japan, and there were some things I didn't like. Um, what yeah, did you like? Uh, yeah, so you know about the steering, brakes, ge generally about the handling. And uh, well, I told him that I wasn't happy, but 
I think they appreciate a lot that someone you know tells them uh, what isn't uh, isn't great, uh, what isn't good and strong and needs to be improved. And I think uh, yeah, they took that on board, tested it again, and uh, it was a much happier product. And that's the the drive for the for the future to you know uh, probably go down the performance route together with the team, the knowledge of the team as well to come up with a yeah high performance car in the future. You but that's a you know it's not happening. Tomorrow, next month, or next year, it's, as I just explained in road it cars, it's a long, long. You have that reputation, like Schumacher did, of working very closely with the team. And do you feel like you have that relationship on the road car side, or you're building that? Well, it's completely different. You know, um, I think I can give the feedback in terms of handling, what I like and don't like, uh, whether it's always right or wrong. I'm not, I don't know, but uh, I I try my best, and it's quite interesting because it's different. You know, it's different to to racing, but I have the racing background, and that's obviously where I come from and uh, yeah there's nothing nothing wrong with that and it's to take some you know elements uh, into a road car and uh, also to give the people who are responsible on the road car because in the end I'm not designing the car I'm not building the car so it's not my car but um, yeah in the end it's maybe pushing people uh, to be creative from and, and see different things from a different different angle thank you guys very much no problem. for coming in it's a real honor, a real treat. Yeah, pleasure. And congratulations again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay.